Good evening, everybody. It is 631, and I'm first going to call to uh, order a public hearing. Uh, it's a public hearing to amend the code of the Borough of Westchester, Chapter 89, titled Sewers, Section 89-1.1G, to revise sewer tapping fees. Do we have to present any stuff here? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Estee. As the president indicated, this is a hearing to consider an ordinance which would revise the tapping fees applicable to new connections to the borough's sanitary sewer system. We have three exhibits to make part of the record. Exhibit B1 is a proof of publication in the Daily Local News showing that notice of this hearing was published on August 8, 2022. B2 is an email dated June 17, 2022 from Jill Kirk of our law firm to the Daily Local News and the Chester County Law Library providing a copy of the proposed amendment for public inspection. Exhibit B3 is the sewer system tapping fee calculation, which was prepared by Keystone Consulting, uh, who the borough contracted with to calculate the tapping fee. That calculation is dated May 6, 2022. Those exhibits should be made part of the record of the hearing and it would be appropriate uh, to ask for any public comment. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Esty. Uh, is there any comment from anyone up here or the public? Are you gonna say, no, okay. All right, seeing none, uh, I think it uh, would be prudent then to, uh, for somebody to make a motion to approve this. Mr. Stefano, I uh, make a motion to approve the Ordinance as per, uh, submitted. Thank you. Second. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded to uh, approve the ordinance as presented. Um, could you please call the question? Mr. Flynn? Yes. Ms. Vaccaro? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Allen is absent. Mr. McCoy? Yes. Ms. Dorsey? Yes. Mr. Stefano? Yes. Motion carries six to zero. Okay, uh, that being the case, we will now close that hearing and it is now 634. So I'm gonna open up our uh, August 16th, 2022 Borough Council work session meeting. Um, before we get into everything, I'm just gonna make one housekeeping item. I'm gonna do a little bit of rearranging. And I'm gonna move item number nine up to after number item number three. Just, be, just because we have some interviews, people are volunteering their time, I'd like to respect their time and have them come up and interview first. So after, our, after item number three, we'll then do nine and then we'll move on with the rest of the agenda. Okay, uh, Okay. Pledge of Allegiance. Can I please have that uh, be led by Mr. McGinnis? Okay, uh, moving on to item number three, which is comments, suggestions, petitions by residents and attendants regarding items that are not on the agenda. If you wish to speak, please come up to the mic, state your name and address for the record. I'm seeing none. All right, so we're going to move on to item number nine, as I said, which is we have two um, sets of interviews to do for our library board and for our planning commission. Um, so first we're gonna start with the library board of directors. We have an opening, we have one opening and we actually have two applicants. The first applicant, Susan Dreisbaugh actually uh, withdrew. So we're gonna move on to item number two, or to number two, which is Andrea Moore. Are you here? Wanna come on up? Thanks. And if I say anybody's name wrong, please just, just correct me. Am I saying it right, Andrea? Or is it Andrea? Andrea, okay, sorry, sorry about that, I apologize. So uh, Ms. Moore, would you please just let us know a little bit about yourself and why you'd like to uh, apply for this position? Uh, it, 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 does ha it does matter, so you are a resident of the borough? Okay, okay, okay.
No worries. Thank you very much. Could you do me one favor? Could you just pull that microphone over? So I'm sure they're going to yell at you soon. But thank you. Um, do we have any questions for for Miss Moore up here? No. Okay. Um, so the way this is going to work is uh, we'll actually have this on the agenda tomorrow night, and we'll, after our interviews tonight, tomorrow night we'll make a decision and choose somebody. There is one opening for this, and there's two applicants. So unfortunately, we'll have to let one person will be disappointed. But we, uh, I'll say this to every candidate: we really appreciate volunteering time and, and being willing to do it. it's really great so thank you thank you very much yep yeah and miss moore oh, there. I, i'm sorry i just wanted to say i was at the hot cocoa moms event at the melton center and thank you for uh inviting uh several people to come read to the children because they got a kick out of it and i think you know sometimes reading to children is underestimated and they enjoyed it, and it was one of the last events that people got to see Daryl, uh, Daryl McLean, uh, dressed as a female Santa Claus. So thank you for that. Well, we really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, number three, or actually number two, I guess, is Ms. Kelly Dungy. Are you here? Hi. Come on up. And uh, same thing, just introduce yourself, say a little bit something, why you want to be considered for this. Yeah. Great, thank you. Uh, questions for Ms. Dungy? Comments? No? Okay, uh, same thing. We have one opening to uh, two applicants, so um, uh, we'll have to only choose one, uh, but I'm going to thank everybody for their willingness to serve, and it's really great. So thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, and then we have three applicants for our planning commission. Once again, we only have one opening for that as well. Uh, so we're going to go through them. Uh, first on the list is uh, Craig Loundis. I say it right? Pretty good? Hi, Craig. How are you? Good. Great, thank you. Uh, questions for our applicant here? No? Okay. Um, and Sheila, feel free to chime in at any point. Sorry, I, I, I'm looking left and right, but if you have anything, just, just interrupt me. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Um, just like for the library, I, we're going to make some decisions to, tomorrow night, but thank you for your willingness to serve and good luck. Yep. All right. Moving on to number two is Tom West. Are you here, Tom? Come on down. Yeah. And same thing, so tell us a little bit about yourself, why you'd want to serve you. Yeah.
questions? No? Ms. Dorsey, have any? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Well, thank you. Just same thing. We're going to make a decision tomorrow night. So uh, good luck. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You got it? And then lastly, we have Matthew Clapp. Are you here? Hi. Right, come on down. Thanks. Same thing. Tell us a little bit about yourself, why you want to serve. Thank you. Questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, what I'll say is just first thanks to all the candidates tonight. Um, like I said, willingness to serve is not to be taken lightly. We need volunteers, and, and this is really amazing. So uh, unfortunately, we'll have to choose one um, for, um, for each of those positions tomorrow night. We'll make that decision. I appreciate all the candidates being here. If you want to stay for this meeting, you're more than welcome, but do not feel obligated on our half. Okay. So thank you. All right. We're going to go back up to item four which is rendered decision on the economic development restaurant liquor license application for 16 East Gay Street, which is White Cow LLC. Uh, Mr. SD. You have before you a resolution which decides the application for an economic development license for White Cow LLC. It's proposed for a property that's 16 East Gay Street. Uh, as you know, uh, in order for the applicant to file an application with the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board for an economic development license, it first must be approved by the Borough Council. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the proposed resolution in its entirety for your minutes, and it will take me a little bit of time. I apologize. A resolution on the application or request of White Cow LLC for property located at 16 East Gay Street for an economic development restaurant liquor license pursuant to Section 4-461 of the Pennsylvania Liquor Code. Whereas on May 3rd, 2022, White Cow LLC applicant by and through its counsel, William J. Schuin III Esquire, submitted an application to Borough Council application requesting the approval of an economic development restaurant liquor license pursuant to 47 pertinent statutes section 4-461 b.1 of the pennsylvania liquor code the liquor code and whereas the liquor code allows the pennsylvania liquor control board to issue a restaurant liquor license without regard to the quota restrictions in the liquor code for the purpose of economic development in a municipality if the governing body of the municipality has approved the issuance of the liquor license for the purpose of local economic development. And whereas section 4-461B.122 of the Liquor Code provides that council may approve the request if it finds that the issuance of the license would promote economic development. And whereas applicant has requested that Borough Council approve the issuance of an economic development restaurant liquor license for a proposed restaurant to be located at 16 East Gay Street in the borough, the property. And whereas Borough Council scheduled a public hearing for Tuesday, June 14, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. in the Borough Council public meeting room 
at Borough Hall, 401 East Gay Street, Westchester, Pennsylvania. And whereas the borough published public notice of the aforesaid date, time, and place of the hearing in the daily local news and mailed the public notice to owners of properties within 500 feet of the property along East Gay Street and within a, and within a radius of 150 feet of the property, and whereas Borough Council conducted the public hearing as scheduled and a continued hearing on July 19, 2022, for the purpose of receiving evidence from the applicant on the request and receiving comments and recommendations of interested individuals residing in the borough concerning applicants intent to acquire the liquor license. And whereas applicant presented evidence at the hearing consisting of the sworn testimony of the sole member of the applicant, a limited liability company, and one of the owners of the real estate located at 16 East Gay Street. And whereas it is the applicant's burden of proof to demonstrate how the proposed license would promote economic development in the borough. And whereas in summary, applicants evidence consisted of testimony regarding the experience of the proposed restaurant operator, the type of restaurant proposed, the proposed menu, the proposed hours of operation, the number and estimated wage rates of proposed employees, and female ownership of a limited liability company that would apply for the liquor license and would operate the restaurant. And whereas, although Borough Council is supportive of female owned and operated businesses, no evidence was presented that such ownership and operation is in furtherance of economic development in the borough, and whereas the applicant presented no evidence to demonstrate any economic benefits to the borough, including no substantial and credible evidence on potential economic development resulting from the approval of the license by borough council, and whereas by electronic mail dated June 15, 2022, marked and admitted in the record as exhibit borough council six at the July 19th 2022 hearing council pursuant to section 4 461 b.122 of the liquor code invoked an extension of time until August 16, 2022 to make a decision on the application. And whereas council has considered applicants request and the evidence presented and finds and concludes that the issuance of the liquor license will not promote economic development within the borough based on a lack of any evidence that the proposed license would promote economic development. Now, therefore, be it hereby resolved that borough council finds as fact the statement set forth in the whereas paragraphs here and above, and be it further resolved that based on the evidence presented at the hearing, the council denies the application and disapproves the issuance of an economic development restaurant liquor license to applicant for the property and proposed restaurant since no evidence was presented that the proposed license would promote economic development in the borough of Westchester. Resolved, approved, and adopted the 16th day of August 2022. It would now Thank you, Mr. Esty. Sorry, I had to read all that. That's long. That was long. Mr. Stefano, yes. I make a motion to present the resolution as presented. Thank you. Someone second. There you go. Motion has been made and seconded to adopt the resolution as read. Um, further discussion? Okay. Uh, would you call the question? Mr. Flynn? Yes. Uh, Ms. Vaccaro? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. McCoy? Yes. Ms. Dorsey? Yes. Mr. Stefano? Yes. Motion carries 6-0. Okay. Moving on to item number five, which is discussing the special donation request for Unite for Her. I don't believe there is a representative from, unless I'm wrong, somebody could step up from Unite From Her. Um, 
to request that. So either we dismiss this or table it. Uh, what do you think, Mr. Flynn? Well, the, uh, the, the person from United for Her uh, was requested by our committee to come and explain to Borough Council uh, their position on uh, the nonprofit they represent, which is a very good nonprofit for uh, breast cancer and cancer. And uh, uh, they did not come tonight. Um, so I would say that we just dismiss it. Any other anybody have any issues with that? I feel like that's appropriate. All right. So we're going to dismiss item number seven or six. Wait, five. There it is. I, I crossed it out already. Sorry. Sorry. Five. Okay. Uh, moving on to item number six, which is new police department hire recommendations from our mayor, Mayor, mayor D. Baptiste. Do you have some, some hires? Thank you so much, President Stefano um, and Borough Council and all those who are here today. Um, we, um, the Westchester uh, Borough and led by our Chief, Chief Moorhead and myself, uh, had the opportunity to interview about eight applicants uh, last week, um, all very good applicants. However, we have chosen four applicants uh, to join our Westchester Police Force um, with your consent. Uh, we have before us four people, all of them who have their Act 120 and three of them who have uh, various degrees of police experience from minimal to quite a lot. Um, we have four people, their name their names are Cara Doherty, Douglas Gilbert, Luis Lopez Torres, and Ryan McMillan. Those are the four applicants after careful consideration that we put before you and um, ask that you consent to them being joined uh, with the Westchester Police Force. They're all very good qualified applicants and as I just said, all come with their Act 120 uh, with them. Um, and so they're ready to start boots on the ground, if you will, from day one. Um, here to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Flint. Mayor and Chief Moorhead, the, uh, the, the um, current role of how many police officers we have on, on staff at, at this particular time do you know the, the yes, number? Yes, we have 39. 39? Yes. And we always promise the police department to have 44. So that, that's a, a good move forward. The uh, uh, I happened to go through the police training uh, with the chief, and I'm fully confident if they come with their 120 and they can do what we did at that training, I fully support them. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. Anybody else in comments on this? Okay. Um, what's our action today? Do we do we have to vote on this tonight, or do we put it for tomorrow night at consent? Or I would suggest that the members of council consider placing this on the consent item for tomorrow's agenda. The offer the offer of employment is conditioned on a couple of conditions in the um, civil service rules and regulations that we'll have to follow through on. Um, but the, the motion for council entertain is to um, approve the candidates put forth by the mayor for the vacancies, for the four vacancies that. Okay. Okay. Uh, are we good to put this on consent? Great. Uh, I appreciate all the hard work, uh, Mayor, that you put in, Chief Moorhead, that you put in, uh, and the Civil Service Commission puts in. Uh, I know it's a lengthy process, and uh, I know you're going to get some great candidates, so thank you. Great. That'll go on consent for tomorrow night. All right, moving on to item seven. Discuss the reappointment of the Westchester Borough Voting Wards. This has been an ongoing discussion, and I know we've kind of whittled down to a few options um, to take a look at. Um, I think tonight will we'll be more just discussion, kind of moving, the, moving forward on this. Uh, I don't believe we'll make any decisions tonight, but um, Mr. Metric, do you want to kind of spearhead this one here? Sure, we've been looking at um, 2020 census population data and how it relates to the existing voting ward boundaries. And that's what you see before you in the map 
and uh, labeled here as option A. Um, population has shifted since 2010, according to the 2020 census. Uh, ward, ward four has lost population. Ward five has gained population. Throwing the um, balance of population out of uh, the 10% limits that are ordained or ordered by the court for the borough to follow. So we are, if we were to keep our existing boundaries, we would have um, voting ward populations that were more or less than 10% of the mean or average of the borough's total population divided by the seven wards. So we knew we had to look at the map and consider some options for redrawing the district boundaries. But frankly, there was no really easy solution to this. When we looked at option B, we balanced the sense of the um, voting ward populations as best we can within the 10% limits. But in order to do that, we had to break up the census blocks that make up the 3,600 or so students that were counted in the 2020 census on Westchester University's North Campus on the main campus area. This map actually is within 10%. However, it violates one of the rules we were told to follow, which was to use census block geography when we created voting ward district boundaries. So we again went back to the drawing board, looking at option C. Option C is use a dramatic reduction in um, non-student uh, population in ward number five. In fact, there's only about 125 more or less non-student population in ward five. It's a big change in ward three and it's a change in ward four. So this is a compliant voting uh, ward map that we talked about in committee last week. However, it has some geographic challenges looking at the map. And the last option we looked at was well, plugging all of this information into an algorithm that's been, or an application that's been designed to calculate voting ward boundaries based upon balancing population and balancing uh, racial and ethnic demographics. And this is what the computer told us. Unfortunately, ward number five would, would violate our home rule charter because in ward number five, you have students living in dormitories and you have to be living at your address for at least a year to run for council in your ward. So we would have a difficult time electing someone um, who lived in Ward 5 because at the most they're only there for nine months. So this one has problems as well. So we're, we, we, don't have, uh, we don't have great, uh, there's no great solution here. Um, we have had our legal team look at this issue a little more in depth, but this is where we left off last week with finance and administration committee. Thank you. Can, can you go back to option A? Who's it? Bill, Bill thanks. Um, so this is, this is where we are at right now. And the t what is, was it just four and five are the two wards that are affected by the census that are put us, puts us out of compliance, correct? Yes, wards four and five. And actually there's an imbalance as well between one and seven that can actually be really easily remedied by just transferring that um, rectangle. It on. almost looks like a tenon and mortise uh, situation there where you could take that piece that's west of High Street from seven and put it in one and you actually balance one and seven. Yeah, and I think that that little thing up between one and seven, that little slither there makes a lot of sense just based on the fact that High Street is a natural border there between the two. Um, the big issue I have with with the census numbers is that they were taken in 2020, in the middle of a pandemic, and Ward 4, we have a lot of students in my, in my neck of the woods, and they weren't there because they were all learning remotely, so they went home. It was like a, it was like a ghost town. So those numbers are wrong. <laughs> like I, I mean, they're, they were taken at the time, but they're, they're not an accurate representation, in my opinion, of the population. Now. The so. difference in population in Ward 4 between 2010 and 2020 is 2,513 and 1,800, a 28% drop. Yes. And that just, I just didn't see any mass exodus happening besides the students. Um, and now that things are essentially back to normal, 
uh, you know, they're back. So I just, I think those numbers are skewed um, pretty bad. So, uh, you know, I, when I look at these options, I don't see any good ones besides A with maybe that one modification, cutting off that little nugget of one and putting it in seven, uh, which I think would help. Um, that's my two cents. Council, what do you, thoughts on this? I guess I just have questions around the, like what are, I understand these are our options, but given the, the fact that Mr. Stefano just made, is, are there any exceptions that can be made to redrawing the wards understanding that student population wasn't here in 2020, the majority of 2020? That's a difficult question to answer because you, you can't count something that you don't have data on. We don't have a reliable count because it was done, as the president said, at a time when those students were probably counted at their home address or not counted at all. Can I make a point about this miscount? Yeah, go ahead. It doesn't make sense to me that five is so full of students and yet four was empty at, at the time that the census happened the campus was a ghost town so i am very confused as to who was counted five's population as far as people living in houses hasn't changed the difference is the on-campus population which was not there when the census happened. So I'm very confused as to why there's so many more people in five in comparison to what happened to four. I, I just, I, I think something, I don't think that this is really going to fix anything. Um, questioning the count, I think the count is what it is and we have to work around it, but I, I'm very confused by this student population count. I'm right there with you, Sheila. I think it's it's confusing. Um, Mr. Flynn. Yes. Thank you. And Ms. Vercara, I, I, I agree with you and, and uh, Ms. Dorsey and Mr. Stefano on this thing. Probably what happened was the census people went to the, uh, the housing department at Worcester University and they counted the number of beds that were in the super block. And that's how they probably came up with, we know that we rent these things year in, year out, except for 2020. So uh, there's no, there was no large building in four. There was no, no construction in four. So the people now, well, next week, they'll all be back and uh, partying on Mr. Stefano's front doorstep, but they'll be back next week. The dormitories will be full uh, because they know how many beds they can sell. Uh, my, my, my thought process is that um, um, we know that option A is, is the right option for the borough because of the way the borough is laid out. And I think that we should have an arbitrator decide what to do with it. Because if we go with the way uh, C is, for 10 years, Ward 5, it, it, it lasts 10 years. It's not like it's gonna change next year. That board is, is diminished for 10 years. And I think we should have an arbitrator um, uh, speak up for us because option A is, actually works because of the, the, the students come in for 10 months, they don't register and they don't vote. So you'll have 153, 158 full-time residents with this ghost dormitory of 2,700 around the corner. So, uh, I think we should push the envelope and and, and, and uh, take our chances and see if we can't uh, do it ourselves. What do you What do you think about that little spot in Ward One getting cut? Oh, that's fine. Just that. yeah, just use that, uh, like as, that. As, a, as a line straight down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's silly that it pops over. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I know there's some comment, but I'm gonna get council first. Yeah, Mr. Mr. So, McGinnis. So with that, and this is to Mr. SD and Mr. Metric, would we have to file a lawsuit in order for us? 
to stay with option A? Uh, and if so, how would that process work? Would that be with a, a, fred a federal lawsuit to, to do that? If I may, if, if you don't make any change to the existing ward configuration, you don't have to do anything. But if you want to make that, even that small adjustment to, was it seven and eight? then we would have to file a petition with the Court of Common Pleas to realign the boundaries of the wards. And if you decide to do that, and keep in mind, there's nothing compelling you to do this. There are situations where you could be compelled to do it, like in 1987, but right now you're not being compelled to do anything. And from what I'm hearing, we suspect that the census data is not accurate. We don't have any way of well, it's accurate, but a lot of people were missing. Let's put it that way. So you may, in your own judgment, uh, conclude that we don't need to do anything. But going back to if you decide to just make that one change with seven and eight, we need to file a petition with the court of, in Chester County. And we also, I would suggest you submit it first to the county board of elections for them to give their approval of it before we file the petition because they have an interest. There are actually two different standards at play. There's the election code, which controls the, 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 the voting precincts. And you can only have one board. And in other words, you can't have one precinct. And this may seem obvious where people would be voting for two different wards. There has to be a separate precinct for each ward and, uh, the precinct rules are, as you may know, uh, to not exceed 1,200 voters per precinct. And I know that's not an issue in the borough now, but when we start to approach 1,200 in some municipalities, the Board of Elections will come forward and split the precinct. And that's more to, uh, for efficiency. That's the primary, I shouldn't say the primary, but that's a goal of the election code. The other set of rules is your home rule charter says you have seven wards and you have to have seven wards, but you do have the right to realign them if you see a disproportional population distribution. And then the principles that we talked about earlier come into play, equal population, um, and but the 10% deviation can be massaged some if there's some overriding policy concern. And I would say in your case, an overriding policy concern is, is the university. And if all the students were in one ward, you wouldn't be able to elect a representative as somebody said earlier. So I hope that's responsive. That, 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 that's a good question. Cause I, I think in that perspective, I was in the impression that we were more or less compelled to do this. We had to sit there, but I guess we don't. And if we don't make any changes, then it makes our lives easier. But, you know, we still want to be fair and make sure we're doing this the right way. Um, yeah. Clarify that a little bit. When I say compelled, I mean, if, if there was like a 20% deviation, then I would, we would probably recommend to you that you need to do something. Yeah. When I say compelled, there is a process where, registered electors can file a petition to make you do this yeah. or, or make you realign gotcha. or, or at least make you request that the wards be realigned. Okay. Um, I know there was some public comment. Mr. Salvis, you want to come up and come on. Jim Salvis, 141 East Marshall Street. Um, yeah, I've been involved with this for a while. Um, I don't agree that we're not required to do this read the election code on it because we have a ward system we are required to uh, to do it as long as you are elected by ward you have to have uh, uh, voting wards that are proportional to the population you cannot take into account uh, voting patterns uh, that would be great if you could because my particular ward ward one uh, has a problem with this because uh, although we're not that far out of line in terms of population our registration numbers are much higher. So we have uh, over 2,000 uh, people registered in our ward, 
whereas in some other words, you have under 1,000 registered. Um, so, but you can't take that into account. Uh, the election code simply says that you have to look at the, the census numbers and the, uh, the voting precincts. Now, uh, speaking for my ward, I do think that there are changes that, that could be made there. One of the ones that you suggested, I think, is, is a good one. Another would be um, in the last apportionment, uh, the area occupied by uh, Chestnut Square was put into our ward before any people moved in there. So you have approximately 400 people that moved into that ward that burgeoned the, uh, the population in Ward 1. I think you should consider that in any, any future map. I do think that you have to go to an option E uh, in some way. And you are required, as, for, as my reading, to uh, have this map in place before the, uh, the end of the year. The way the, um, the way the election code reads, you have to do it in the same year that the census is released. Census was released earlier this year, uh, so therefore you have to do it before the, the end of the, uh, the calendar year in my reading of the, uh, the election code. Um, it is a tough uh, situation. I've looked at all of the, uh, the options. Obviously, uh, option D is pretty bad. Um, since you can't get a borough council person. And part of the reason that you have the ward system is to elect borough council people. Uh, so you have to come up with some plan that at least get uh, some long-term residents into the area that the university has. So you have to start kind of there and then move up. And I really don't think that you can get by um, the courts with uh, an argument that um, you're going to look at voting patterns or you're going to look at something else. You're going to have to try and make it work within the numbers, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to make it work within the numbers as far as I, I've read uh, on this. Um, it would have been great if we started way earlier. I brought this up with, the la with a couple of people on the last council. They didn't do anything about it, kicked the can down the road. I thought it, this should have started last fall, um, uh, right after the election. Uh, it, it should have been in place. So now, I'm sorry, it falls to you guys. Uh, to uh, to effectuate this, but I think if you read the um, the state election code, it's pretty clear um, uh, what you have to do and where your uh, uh, where your options are. I think you'll get any map that you and you'll just use. You know, if you come up with a map that's way out of line, I think you're just going to lose time because it'll go to the courts. And the last time around, ten years ago, map was rejected. Court, uh, borough council sent up a map that was not in compliance and it was rejected. So you don't want to go that route because you're just going to lose a couple months. So I think you got to come up with a map that is in compliance and, and try and get it submitted before the end of the year. So that's my two cents on that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'm sorry you have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Other uh, comment on this? Mr. Braceland? Um, at Don Brace on 423 West Neal Street. Um, as you know, I used to be the Ward 5 rep. She is current Ward 5 rep. Option C is complete decimation of the ward. Um, when it, and, and Jim would know more about this than I do because he tracked numbers. But when it comes to student voting, uh, I've been in contact with voter services twice, uh, university twice. Um, and what what happens is in Ward Five, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think you're going to have 158 people, not just voters, people, and then over in the university, you're going to have approximately I'm off by a few, but about 2,500 students, uh, most of whom, from my personal experience working as a greeter at the polls, uh, most of them don't vote, um, and if they do, one of the common problems we had was has ugh, that we had would be people would go up and said, well, I tried to vote and my name wasn't on the book and, you know, I, I want to vote. Oh, um, are you registered here? No, I'm registered in Havertown. Okay. Um, you can use a provisional ballot uh, if you want, but I, I, a number of people, a number of students are just in a huff, they just walk out. Okay, you've lost some votes. And um, I have talked uh, with the uh, civic engagement people at the university um, because I thought they should be doing more to, uh, you know, uh, voting. You've got to let people know that you've got to register here if you want to vote here. And um, evidently they do have some, um, uh, they do reach out to the students. Uh, they, the best thing to do is to register online, but it's a question of getting them to actually do it. Um, 
And I think considering the number of potential votes that we are losing, I think that's a detriment to the borough. Oh, and that's another thing. Most students, again, and I know this from talking with them, they don't give two hoots about the borough. That's understandable. Uh, but um, to have three and a half streets, basically, is what the ward will be, is absurd. Uh, Mr. Esty commented that option A, we could just not do anything and perhaps take our chances. And, uh, and it could be that, um, uh, you know, my father used to call me conniving Dan and salesman Sam when I was about that big because I could get in or out of anything. Uh, I can't do that anymore. But there got to be an exception somewhere. There's got to be an out here somewhere. Uh, and if it's state law, challenge is state law. We were going to do that with a plastics ban if we got in trouble. Um, it's just, um, I just don't think this is, you know, I hate to use the word fair, but um, it's just not an equitable situation in any way. Option A, we're not doing anything. Um, I think that'd be the best way to go. Um, and frankly, I mentioned to Mr. Flynn, I mentioned to Sheila earlier today, uh, if I were still Ward 5 rep and this were voted in, I would tend to give my resignation that night. Why bother? 158 people and students. Now, um, back to the civic engagement department over there. They're understaffed right now. Okay, that's fine. Um, so they're not going to have the same resources they normally would to really push this when the new students come in. Plus, you're dealing with freshmen and a few sophomores that are going to be living on the super block not much more than that and after they get off you know they go off into the neighborhoods mike's ward um so uh, i don't have a specific answer obviously but um it's something that uh, i'm really concerned with there's got to be an exception somewhere just a question of finding it and um that's why we got lawyers so um thank you thank you Thanks, Mr. Braceland. Um, Mr. Spano. Yeah, again, Mr. McCoy. If I could speak. Uh, yeah, I, I'm inclined to think that that A would be the best option. I wish we could make the adjustment to to one and seven, and um, and then leave the rest alone. But that sounds like that throws us into uh, into different territory. But I think A and taking our chances seems like the the best thing to do for the for the borough and voters at this point. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would find. It's hard to believe that us keeping it the way it is is going to make any drastic changes in in, in, um, in turnout um, in the next election, um, especially in my neck of the woods. Um, what's Mr. Metric? Can you give me like your temperature on like the timeline here? Are we hard pressed to get this done by the end of the year, as has been mentioned, or is this something that we can get done <laughs> soon? Or I I think we should move accurately and swiftly with this because if it's going to affect next year's primary um we really need to we really need to be set up and ready to go and all things settled by january because depending on the amount of changes you're going to make you need voter services at the county on board and uh, the people who vote need to know that their voting location may have changed or, or their council represent representative may have changed and does any does anything pro stop us from working with voter services in this process? You know, I feel like we we're working separately than them. We're going to come up with an option, give it to them, and they're going to make a decision. Could they be a part of the decision process? We're saying, listen, this is the reason we're going with this option. Would they be able to like? Would that help our case, or at least give them some kind of uh, input from them? Input's always welcome. I can't say for sure how it'll be received. Okay. Um. Okay, so I, we're not going to make a, a decision tonight on this. What I suggest we do is we, we keep this going through committee. Unless there's, unless there's a special meeting that we want to do, but I, I don't know if we need to do that for this. Um, we keep this going through committee and uh, we make sure we get the word out. I mean, maybe we can invite voter services to come to the, the next committee meeting. Uh, this is under act, right? Act committee um, uh, to come to that. Give us their, their opinion. Um, and I also implore all the council people to reach out to your wards, um, they let them know, show that, share the options with them and see if you can get some feedback from them as well. Mr. Brayson, again. Briefly, please. 
You don't have to say that. I was on this thing for eight years. I know how it works. Um, just for that, I'm going to take four minutes. No, uh, I've dealt with uh, voter services quite a bit uh, twice this week. Uh, I have never found them to be, me personally, have never found them to be anything less than uh, very, very cooperative, always interested in if you got an idea, let's explore it. Um, and because I, I know today when I, this is, I don't believe I didn't know this, but I didn't realize that the borough redrew the lines. I thought, you know, they did. And when I heard that, I was like, who did that? Anyway, um, so I, I think, I, again, I'd like to see option A. I think it's something that we might be able to work with, with uh, uh, voter services, and you don't know until you try. Thank you. Okay. That being said, I think we're going to, we're going to, I don't know, you know, we're not going to make any action on this tonight. We're going to bring this back to the committee next month and, and keep the ball rolling with this. Uh, I just want to, yeah, Mr. Could, Gansky, yes, uh, Sean, could we just represent option A in the meantime? That way we could at least have know what's going to happen at the next act committee meeting as a result of a conversation you had with voter services. What exactly do you mean? Sorry. Um, with the change with, with, the... with that change in option a moving that 1 little rectangular path. Yeah, we can, we can create that and, and see what they say that way. Yep. When we go to the act meeting, we know we have an answer. Yeah, makes sense. Absolutely. Good. Yeah. And Mr. Stavon, yeah, and Mr. Metric, the, the, the moving over from church street over to, uh. High street, uh, if our if Nick can do a, a, uh, account on how many people. That would actually pick up in seven versus as as was mentioned the, the 400 people that got picked up in chestnut square and maybe it may balance it out a little bit it's 292 would move from seven to one oh it's half okay 50 percent. okay all right okay all right great thank you uh we'll move on from that to item eight which is discuss the rep reproductive rights ordinance this was an ordinance that uh, got presented uh, essentially asking that our police force not enforce any um, uh, if 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 the state were to overturn Roe v. Wade laws at our state level. In the case of that, this would be asking the police department not to enforce those uh, those laws at our local level. Um, there has been some other options that present it because quite frankly, this is asking us to go against our home rule charter, which says that borough council does not direct the police department how to do things. It's the mayor's job. So there has been some other options that are presented uh, in terms of resolutions and uh, possible letters to law, uh, local lawmakers. Um, do you want to, Ms. Doris, do you want to go yeah. over some of those options? I need to work on. So this was on the public safety uh, agenda as other business this month. And, and last month it was presented uh, by Councilman uh, uh, McGinnis. And I, you know, just as President Stefano has said, uh, abortion and uh, women's reproductive rights uh, are legal in the state of Pennsylvania right now. Um, and if we'd like it to stay that way, I encourage everyone in this room and everyone listening to make sure you get out and vote uh, for representation that supports that so that women can continue with their right to choice. Um, since last month, uh, I've had the opportunity to discuss the options with the mayor as we had got legal counsel, our solicitor, as Mr. Stefano has said, um, the jurisdiction of the police, according to our home charter rule, clearly falls with the mayor. Um, and as such, I think the mayor has something that she'd like to present tonight. This. Thank you, President Stefano and Vice President uh, Dorsey. Um, a, as you both said, last month uh, the ordinance was brought to light by Brian McGinnis uh, to, to um, our, our council or to public safety, I believe. Uh, since that time, um, and, he, and he made it known that he was an ally of those who advocate for women's reproductive rights. Uh, and for that, I am thankful. 
until that point, I had not really been reached by any woman in the borough of Westchester to advocate for women's reproductive rights. And I had had a conversation with uh, Chief Moorhead about that to see if, you know, how are things going uh, with that? Because as many of you know, Westchester is home to a local Planned Parent organization. And so to that end, uh, I've had a multitude of conversations uh, since that ordinance, just to see if perhaps I am missing something. And so while I do appreciate that Brian McGinnis is both an ally for women and an advocate for women's reproductive rights, I felt that it was important that whatever was presented had both meat and merit. And this ordinance does not provide either. And so to that end, uh, in my discussions, I wanted to reach out to those people who were uh, on the front line, if you will, people such as Elaine Johnson, uh, who is the local manager of the Planned Parenthood, and people such as Lindsay Malden, who is uh, the vice president of public policy and advocacy of Planned Parenthood Southeastern and also the director of coordinated programs. And so I'm happy to say that in speaking with them both, um, they have been very, very enthusiastic about the response of our police force. Our police force have always made our local Planned Parent organization feel protected and feel welcome. And even when there is uh, any type of protesters, which happens on a weekly basis, as many of us know, um, they are able to protect the First Amendment rights of the protesters while, well, not advocating, but protecting the rights of those who want the, to make their choice in reproductive women's reproductive rights. And for that, I am help, happy. Uh, if anything, they were pleased. I reached out to them. They were pleased with the response uh, of our police department. And so I am happy to say that Westchester women uh, can feel safe, and those who come to Westchester can feel safe and protected. I am happy about that. However, however, all of that, because of the political climate that we find ourselves in, it is important that we feel and that we know that we are being proactive about anything that may come down the line. And to that end, I have uh, created a resolution, a mayoral resolution, so that Westchester women and those who come to Westchester from other states can feel as our governor will uh, declared on July the 12th that they are protected uh, by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And so I have reiterated uh, many of the things he has said and he has set forth. And so our police will continue to vigorously and vigilantly defend the rights of women here uh, to uh, exercise their choice in reproductive health care, even uh, with the upcoming days of remembrance. And what I, where many of the protesters, what I found interesting, which was uh, new to me, but many of the protesters that come are coming from out of state. And so when we have these 40 days of remembrance of life uh, that they come, they come from all over. So they're not our local people who are protesting, they're coming from all parts of the country to to come to, to go to different Planned Parenthood agencies. But be that as it may, to that end, I do have a resolution. I would like to share it uh, with all of council and with our uh, solicitor and with our borough manager. Uh, and um, Mr. Mann, if you can put it up on the screen. I, I don't want to bore you with the, the reading of it, but I'm sure that uh, if you do want to read it, I can make it available. But I do have a resolution so that women 
here know uh, that they are protected, that they are safe, and that they are cared for. I've long been an advocate for, for uh, women's uh, health care. I um, have been on the board of Planned Parenthood many years ago, well over 20 years ago, and I did uh, reach out to Brian McGinnis uh, last Tuesday and asked him to extend me some grace so that I could continue to do my homework so that I could be both slow, methodical, and exact to get the proper words in place to talk to the proper people to see the exact needs of our community uh, and, and so that this could be a collaborative effort. Madam Mayor, I don't think we have the resolution. Yeah, I haven't seen what that we... yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, please. And as a follow up to uh, the mayor's resolution, uh, Councilwoman Vaccaro and myself have uh, drafted a letter that we'll send to uh, Representative Heron and Senator Kamita, um, that will, who can really affect change here in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, and that is what you see. Oh, no, that's the resolution you have up there now. So that, that letter has been shared with council and we'd like to have council members sign that, uh, and have it go to, uh, Senator Kamita and, uh, Representative Heron. Thank you. So other thoughts on this? I, I, I think these two options, I, I mean, the first option with the resolution by the mayor is under her purview, and I, I appreciate her doing that. Um, but the option to have this uh, you know, letter sent to um, Representative Heron and uh, uh, Senator Kamita, I think is really uh, a good step to kind of push them to to get some some stuff done at the state level, which is where it can make a difference. Um, you know, God forbid it does go away. So, um, other thoughts on this? The only thing I wanted to add is uh, the original is signed uh, and will be on record. The resolution. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Any comments from anybody here? I know some people are still reading, but uh, okay. yeah, come on up. Yeah, come on. Make sure you state your name and address for the record. Hi, I'm Bob Burley. Uh, I live in West Bradford Township, but I've been a Planned Parenthood volunteer here in Westchester since 1997. Uh, it's 25 years. I actually had 25 years before that, so that goes back to before Roe. <clears throat> um, and I know Elaine and uh, I know Lindsay. Uh, uh, I think that, and I, I have someone here with me who not only is an escort, but a security guard uh, for this clinic and clinics, Planned Parenthood clinics all over Eastern Pennsylvania. Uh, I just wanted to point out that there are future risks <clears throat> that uh, are, are actually real. Um, it has to do with the states that are now hostile to reproductive rights, where there are outright bans and so forth. Uh, and in part because in Chester County, we have college students who are at Westchester, uh, Cheney, Lincoln, Penn State, Great Valley, Immaculata, Villanova, et cetera. <clears throat> They're from all over the United States and they can be targeted by their home state. Uh, they can be targeted by a opposition who are here. And if you're familiar with something called geofencing, uh, <clears throat> if you have or know someone who has an iPhone, uh, there is a feature uh, called AirDrop. And it's a way to demonstrate that if I turn on my iPhone and any of you have yours on, I will know there are others who are here, same principle. So we have patients who come to the clinic who are receiving text messages from protesters who are out on the street, but who know that they're in there. Um, 
And the next step logically is they will call the police to try to enforce a law from the home state of that patient. So th these are real things. And you know the opposition really is just getting started. So I, I just think that it's important that everyone remember that this isn't the end, this is the beginning. And having an ordinance or uh, you know, a, a, a statement from the mayor, uh, all of those things are very useful, uh, but I think perhaps an ordinance should be kept on the table or at least made available for reconsideration because those incidents are likely to continue to happen. So that's, that's what I wanted to add. Thank you. Uh, Tim, you want to? Hi. My name is Tim Skiles. And I worked at Planned Parenthood for four years as security. I couldn't be more overjoyed about the resolution. Uh, I work at different sites, Allentown, Warminster, Ben Salem, Reading. Of all the different sites that I work, the most aggressive protesters that I have seen are right here in Westchester. Even to the point where there are from St. Joseph's in Downingtown, middle school children are bussed in to protest. Uh, I've never seen that anywhere else that I work, and I'm working in Allentown on Friday, so I'm current. I have not worked in Westchester for the last four years, but I'm still very active, and um, honestly, I don't see with the current state of the nation with Roe v. Wade being overturned, that it's going to get better. And to be proactive and take the me measures that you're taking, I think are exemplary. So um, if I could applaud, I would. <laughs> From my perspective, I think one of the things that makes Westchester so difficult is the logistics. Because it, in Reading, for example, the protesters can't get within 40 yards. It's in a strip mall. Uh, Allentown is very much like Westchester because the protesters are not more than 10 yards away from you. But Westchester, because the cars have to pull through, in some instances, the protesters, it, gets, it can get very troublesome. I will say this, if I may. You guys, the police, have been fantastic. I worked there for four years, and I'm telling you, I, uh, any time, and I had in four years, I probably had maybe four or five times when I had to ask the police to show up. They've been right on time. I, I have an analogy that I'd give for older folks who might remember, dragnet. <laughs> the facts, ma'am. And that's exactly what the police did. They, they were true to their word. They wanted to hear what happened. They're not biased one way or the other. I appreciated it tremendously. So um, all you've done, I think, is make Westchester a better place for women to exercise their choice. And thank you. If you have any questions. Uh, I, I just want to say thank you both gentlemen because you're on the front line you're taking the hits uh, and thank you for being such a wonderful ally the one thing we are going to do in talking with the chief we're going to you know because we're going to uh, I, I went physically down there so I see that little space that they have to protest and how it's right there uh, and I went in and and I don't want to make them a target but we are going to just rewalk uh, the site just to make sure uh, the police are going to make sure they know where uh, everything is inside, you know, because I agree with you. It's not going to be easier and it's more important than ever for people to vote. So that's where time and effort and energy have to be made because, you know, if we think it's bad now, you know, I don't, I don't want to entertain the possibility. So of, of, of not having competent and qualified uh, elected officials. So I think that's more important than ever. Thank you, folks. Thank you both. Thank you both, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Dorsey, you have something? Um, 
I want to ask counsel. I know the, the letter was uh, circulated recently. Any questions or concerns with the letter that uh, as councilman Vaccaro and I put together. What's what's the well, the process usually if council is going to send a letter to like a lawmaker, do we just sign it or is it something that we have to vote on? I mean, how does this kind of. It's not a resolution, right? It's just a letter. So I don't know. Well, if council is going to take some action, then you first need to take action to amend your agenda to put this on the agenda. As long as it was only a mayoral resolution, that wasn't necessary because council wasn't taking any action. So if, if I don't know what Sean's opinion on whether you have to authorize a letter, I personally think you should. In other words, then it's an official action of the borough. You've authorized the correspondence to be sent to your representatives. So if you want to do that, okay. then you need to first entertain a motion to agenda amend the agenda places on the agenda. Yeah. Or we could just put it on tomorrow night and as discussion. Could that work too? Because it's on a new agenda. So we should okay. 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 Fair enough. Um Miss I so I was gonna bring that up with the letter. Uh, I think the letter is well written. However, the letter one of the letters uh still lists the former council members and the former borough manager so i believe tightening up that letter maybe bringing it back through the public safety committee meeting and then going through next month if that's okay do we really need to do that i mean was this letter attached with the old council members name and borough manager yes there was one of them that was that was that's correct on the website. Um, no, well, the one that was emailed to me. It was emailed to. All right, we. I don't technically, we don't see, I technically don't see a rush to get done right away. There's no, there's nothing on this one, but. Um, I don't, I don't seem if somebody wants to make a motion and try to get it on the agenda, I can definitely amend the agenda tonight. Um, if we want to wait till I next like month, I don't make a motion. I, I would like to make a motion to get this on the agenda tonight. I'd like to second it. Okay. So motions have been made and seconded to add the letter of support. For uh, reproductive rights to Diane Heron and Karen committed to the agenda tonight's agenda. Do we any for discussion on that? I, I, Mr. Stefano, I do have a question. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Mr. Gore, uh, Pam Parenthood building sits uh, in my ward, six ward, and uh, I go past there every single day. The, there's no sidewalk there, and I'm looking at it right now, just to refresh my memory, because when you get white hair, sometimes you forget whether there's pavement or not. Everything near is a driveway. Uh, and there's no designated spot as a as a sidewalk or a walking area. So why are we allowing protesters to be in a um, area where they can be hit by a car where there's no sidewalk? They should probably be on the opposite side of the street. Can we can we can we hold that for a second? Because we do have a motion and a second on the table right now. I just want to act on that and then we can talk. Okay. Is that okay, Bernie? Okay, thank you. Sorry. Um, so let's take it, take the um, call the question on that first. Then we can add that on. Yeah. Mr. Flynn. No. Ms. Vaccaro. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. McCoy. Yes. Ms. Dorsey. Yes. Mr. Stefano. Yes. Motion carries five to one. Okay. So that's going to go on as item. What the heck number are we on? Eight A. Let me get eight A. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll, we'll act on that next. Let's, let's finish up eight. You were asking about the actual, um, the, the, you were asking Mr. Gore a question the about state, the safety of the, of the property. Uh, uh, I've all often wondered, you know, um, why those people don't get crushed 
uh, by cars just pulling in because it's a, it's a very traumatic moment when they're going there. Uh, and there's no designated area for them to actually protest safely. Yeah, the building and housing department has never taken a position on this uh, with the protesters there. There is a white line that marks the, the area of the public right away where the protesters were permitted to stand because it is the public right away, which is outside of that private property area. Uh, police chief has alluded to me that they've never had an issue there with safety or anybody being hit by a vehicle. Yeah, it, it says private property, no trespassing. There's a white line, but uh, and then the, the, the parking stalls. Correct. And then it, it, it looks like it's maybe about eight, nine feet to the to the actual macadam of the road, and uh, uh, it it's not designated as as a, a, a pavement, which is scary. I mean, they've been doing it for fifty years, so I guess. Yeah, you know. I mean, it would be the same thing if somebody was walking down that portion of the. So, and then and it's a public right of way, and then you know the building and housing department doesn't really have any regulation over protesters that are in a public right of way. Bernie, can I can I point out that also across the street from Planned Parenthood, I live down the street from Planned Parenthood, so I'm there regularly. I walk through there. On the opposite side of the street, there is also no sidewalk. So if you were to move the protesters across the street, there there is a an area that used to be a gas station. So cars were regularly driving over into that gas station. And then behind that is a is Al's automotive where cars are regularly pulling in and out. The sidewalk, proper sidewalk is non existent. Thank you, Ms. Vaccaro. I live three houses from four houses from that site. And on the opposite side of the street, there's a curb, but there are cutouts. So you can pull into Al's repair shop there. It yeah. just seems to be a lot more safer with a concrete curb uh, than no concrete curb because the chief of police, you know, and, and uh, our safety department, uh, when we close down Gay Street, the, the hoops that we make people jump through to put up concrete barriers uh, and this environment that we're living in today. Uh, it happened in New York. It's happening everywhere. Someone could take a car and just sweep everybody off their feet in, th in that given area because it's a very tense moment for the people coming and the people protesting. It, it's, it's not a, to me, it's not a safe place for people to be protesting. It's not. I just don't think that across the street is much better. I, I, I agree. I, I think it's a very, very contentious position, but the car traffic is, you know, the cars are not directed towards Al's when they're trying to go to Planned Parenthood, but um, it's very similar. Okay, I, I think we're getting a little off topic with in terms of the the agenda item. Just so everybody can like, do you, I have some public comment though? Starting the blue, light blue there. Why don't you come up first? We're in the end there. So. Uh, I just have a question. Uh, my name is Alex Christie, um, one nineteen North Bradford. Um, what does this? I was I had raised my hand during the res, when we were talking about the resolution, um, but what? Can you explain exactly what is happening with this um, and what it does? From my reading, it says, um, you know, if some other state were to criminalize you crossing a border, um, that the Westchester police would not enforce something like that. Is that correct? Okay. Um, are you all aware that, I mean, I did send you an email. I didn't get a response, unfortunately, from anyone. Um, but are you all aware that um, there is in pretty much entrenched Republican majorities in the Pennsylvania State Senate and the Pennsylvania State House that are I mean, actively working to take this right away. And we talked about voting, right? Like, oh, just go out and vote for people. Like, people did vote for you all. Um, so, I, you know, I would implore you to do something now before it's too late. Um, we're, it, there's no way we're going to flip, Democrats are going to flip the Senate. There is, you know, a chance they may flip the House, but why risk it? We, we were talking about ward maps earlier and rolling the dice on those like, oh, let's just present this one that we know is illegal. Um, that's great, but why are we unwilling to do that with fundamental rights? Um, so, you know, that's, that's my two cents. 
um, I, you know, I encourage you to do more. Um, you know, adopt some language from um, Councilman McGinnis's um, uh, ordinance and and go from there and go back to the drawing board because I do not um, think this is enough. So thanks. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Mr. You want to talk real quick, Mr. Brian? We're going to talk. About yeah, I was just going to say back, uh, one thing, and 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 I do appreciate the mayor and Sheila, and uh, Councilman Dorsey for putting forth something. But as the mayor mentioned, um, she mentioned the future, and the future is never guaranteed. In the future, we're just one governor away, and we're one vote in essentially the state legislature away if the Republicans control the state legislature again, which meaning they're going to put a constitutional amendment on the ballot come September, or excuse me, come next May. And let's say, God forbid, if that passes, Tom Wolf's executive order would mean absolutely nothing. Zero, nothing. And therefore, our police department would still have to comply, would comply actually, with out-of-state investigations. Hence, for example, uh, what happened in Ohio when a 10-year-old girl was raped and she had to go to Indiana for an abortion. That is a scenario that I think that we should be trying to avoid. We should try to preempt uh, moving forward. That's why I believe an ordinance has teeth to that structure because that future is never guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. And let's say, for example, if everything goes right in this election, we don't know what's gonna happen four years down the road or the next election cycle down the road. I mean, that is the, the ultimate doomsday scenario. Uh, the reason why I lifted this ordinance is because a uh, constituent brought it up to me on what Radner did as a result of the leaked Supreme Court case. And I didn't want to do anything at that time because, again, it was a leak. We didn't know until the Supreme Court rendered their decision. Then Radner passed their ordinance. Now we're seeing cities like Allentown and Pittsburgh uh, attempting to pass the same thing. And I don't want to put our police department in a precarious manner or investigation, in which case they have to work with, unfortunately, these neighboring states that want to go back to the Stone Age. Um, and that's why I think, you know, that's why I feel strongly about this ordinance. I respect Mr. Estes' opinion. I disagree uh, about that opinion. Uh, but I do think that we could do a little bit more here in Westchester Borough. Uh, I like to remind people Westchester Borough has a rich history of being on the forefront uh, of these types of social issues dating back to the Fugitive, Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 and the Underground Railroad that exists right here, in which case those people bringing slaves to freedom were either subject to fine and imprisonment or both, or in some cases killed. I look at what's happening now in this country as an enslavement against women and women's rights, and I think that's wrong. You know, Mr. Stefano asked me to lead the Pledge of Allegiance, you know, with liberty and justice for all. But we have to figure what does that mean right now? And so that's where I'm at. I hope that we can do more uh, because, as I said, the future is never guaranteed. Thank you, sir. The idea of putting a walkway across the street would be from a security would be fantastic because it delineates where they are and where the patients are. As it is right now, there is in fact a white line, but I mean, you can't get into your parking space unless you cross the white line, which the protesters are allowed to stand in. And I mean, they purposely will shuffle their feet and move as slowly as they can, put propaganda through the windows if the window is down a little bit. Having them on the other side of the street would be fantastic from security purposes. It's a highly charged emotional situation, so it's dangerous. I mean, these young women are coming in and the protesters are holding up hideous signs 
you know, and, every, and walking around in front of them. It's a miracle that no one has been hurt. I mean, so, I mean, I know that's an expense to the borough, but I think it is well worth the expense for the safety of everyone concerned, you know, to do it and more accessibility. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate the, those thoughts, but we have to keep on topic or that's a little off topic, but I, but I do appreciate those thoughts. If that's something you want to bring up, I think that's something we could put through public safety in future months. But we right now with this, that's outside the purview of this Thank you. agenda, but I do appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. So we have item eight, which is discuss the reproductive rights ordinance. Um, that's what we're on right now. We have to decide what we're going to do with it. Can I say yeah, Ms. something? I when Brian showed me the ordinance that he's proposing, I was excited to see something happening. The more I spoke to people, the more I heard from legal counsel, the more it was clear that the ordinance, the way it is written, will not protect me or anyone else with a uterus if the law changes in Pennsylvania. The police will still have to do what the police are told to do by the state. What we need to do are things that we can do. The things that we can control, we need to start making change. And some of it is small and it feels tedious and tiny and, and painfully inadequate. But it still needs to be done. I wish I could outlaw all the bad things in the world, but I I don't have that authority. I don't have that power. I do have certain abilities and I can encourage and support the things that I believe in, but writing an ordinance that's claiming to protect women in, in our borough when it's not going to do that when the law changes is very, very misleading to our community. And I'm very concerned about that. Thank you. Uh, that being said, this is a discussion item. We don't have to take any action on it tonight. We don't need to put it on a consent. We don't need to do anything. We can, or, or no, I'm sorry, on discussion for tomorrow night. We don't need to, we can put it back to committee if we need to, if we are so compelled to, but I'm not getting much uh, support from council at this point. Mr. Stefano, if I could, uh, I mean, the, the good news is I think that, uh, we are all sort of on the same page and would like to, to make something happen. But I think uh, taking a little bit of time, although I know time is, is of essence, taking a little bit of time to, to craft the correct vehicle to, to make it happen is, is important. Okay. Mr. Salves. You have it within your power. Uh, to put a uh, um, an amendment to the uh, uh, home rule charter on the ballot, you have to do that 13 weeks before a uh, an election. You can't do it for this fall's election, but you can do it for next spring's. I think that in your deliberations, you should consider possibly using that power. If you can't use this power right now, if you can't make yourself strong enough this way, you can place an amendment that you write on the ballot just with the vote of uh, members of council. So to to to, uh, to amend the home rule charter for what? Amend home rule charter. You can change it any way you but want. But what would you what would you suggest us changing? I it would to? suggest that you have uh, 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 an amendment put in there with teeth for the uh, um, the protection of uh, uh, of women within the uh, and their reproductive rights within uh, Westchester uh, Borough. Uh, it is your uh, bailiwick. Uh, somebody could come after you in court and say you're nullifying state law, but that state law doesn't exist yet. Yours would exist before them. Uh, and it's possible they will have a competing um, amendment to the state constitution. I expect they will put one on the ballot, and I expect that one will fail, and I expect yours would succeed. So I, I think that's another avenue you can consider. You have three uh, avenues here. You have the mayor's uh, proposal, you have uh, Brian's amendment, and I think you have the, the power to put an amendment on the, uh, on the ballot. Now, we did this. Uh, but we didn't do it with council. We did it with the pipeline ordinance uh, a number of years back. Um, that uh, ordinance uh, effectively nullifies state law. It's against the law what we did. Uh, but what we did was say, come after us. 
Westchester is taking a stand on pipelines. And we did. We don't have any pipelines. Nobody's going to bother trying to come after us because of the fact that we've put up a legal fence that they're going to have to take us to court on. So you could put up a fence. You could think about how you might word that. So thank you. I like that idea. Yeah, I, I, thank you. I was just going to say I do think that is a good idea then. Makes sense thank to you. me as well. I think that makes a lot. And it has lot more teeth. teeth. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. All right, that being the case, what do we have to do with this item, Mr. Metric, tonight? Doesn't sound like council's in favor of pushing it forward. Um, there's some other ideas going on. So what do we have to actually take? Action? Mr. Stefano, if I may, yeah, I yeah. will, I will uh, <laughs> withdraw this ordinance and okay. look to pursue uh, this as an amendment per Mr. Salvis's recommendation through a voter referendum. Uh, okay. and, I, and I think that will probably be the way to go. Okay. If that's the case, that, that would have to go back through committee so that makes sense. Okay, so we're going to withdraw this. We're, we've discussed it. We're moving on. There's no action on item eight. Okay, uh, moving on to item eight A, which was the, the added uh, agenda item, which was the letter to the state um, senator and uh, re representative. Um, I feel like we discussed that a lot already. Um, do we want to put this on consent or does somebody want to put this on discussion? Is there I would there? be a, a, an advocate for putting it on consent, assuming that we have consent of council to at least take that step with uh, state senator committee and um, senator committee and uh, represent state representative Heron. I, I too, you know, would support the referendum. I think it has more teeth um, to use Mr. Salvis's words, puts a fence around um, the borough and protects women's rights. Um, but, I, you know, I think this also is an action we should move forward. Yeah, I don't see any any reason it would it wouldn't make any difference on the referendum later. So, is are we consent on that? Any? Okay. All right. So, eight A is the letter. Uh, uh, the council supporting that letter uh, will be on consent agenda. Okay. Moving on to item ten. We already did nine. Uh, approve the request from the bid to provide a grant support letter for a Keystone Communities Program grant to help fund the Facade Improvement Grant Program. Um, any questions on this? Okay, we'll move that to consent. Item 11 is approve a resolution authorizing the borough manager to sign a non-exclusive video sharing license agreement with PennDOT. Um, this was approved at the uh, April 22 Borough Council meeting. Um, Oh, so we have this is the resolution approving. Okay, I understand. Any uh, questions or issues with this? No. Okay. Uh, that's consent as well. Item 12, approve the amendment to a bicentennial garage lease agreement between the Westchester Borough and Eclat Chocolate um, to alter the terms and conditions of the option term. Any Anything we need to really discuss on that or is that? All right. Wait and see if she loves anything. No, okay. No. So, we'll, okay, thank you. Any comments? All right, consent on that. 13 is authorized as a solicitor to amend Chapter 77, Parking Program Residential, to remove all references to parking stickers and associated costs, guest cards and associated costs, and special business cards and associated costs from the entire ordinance. Remove the, the following holidays from Section 77 2, definitions holiday, Columbus Day. General Election Day, Veterans Day, and Schedule Public Hearing date on September 20th, 2022. So this is really just to uh, to schedule that public hearing. Any questions or issues with that? I'd like to clarify this is not discarding or getting rid of the parking permit residential program. It's just cleaning up the language in the ordinance so it accurately reflects what the borough does. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Any issues with that, that date, September 20th? All right. That's going on consent. Item 14, authorizes the solicitor to amend chapter 104-45, special purpose parking zones established, parking otherwise prohibited to change the direction at 224 Biddle Street from north to west. Um, that's added 9-16-2015 by ordinance number 12-2015. And a scheduled public hearing date on September 20th, 2022. Um, this was clarified for me. We're not actually changing the direction of the street. It's just a typo error uh, we're changing in the, in the ordinance. So. Uh, any questions or, or issues with adding that as a public hearing for next month? Okay. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> All right, that's going on consent. Moving on to item 15. Authorize the solicitor to amend chapter 104 to add parking meters on the 200 block of East Market Street, uh, South Side. Schedule a public hearing date on September 20th, 2022. Um, is there any reason we couldn't put them all in one public hearing for all these amendments? We had to make them all separate. We we can do it as one ordinance amendment that would a address all of these, and oh. that would be could we could then we do it one hearing. Okay, yeah. that, I feel like that would be better. Okay, any issues with this as well? Add this to okay. So that's going on consent. Sixteen authorize the solicitor to amend Chapter One Hundred Four Dash Four Five Special Purpose Parking Zones Established Parking Otherwise Prohibited to add a handicapped parking space at Five Hundred Eight East Minor Street. Um, that's also a scheduled public hearing date, and that'd be on the same date, September 20th, 2022. Issues? Anybody? Okay, moving that up to consent as well. All right, moving on. Item 17 is under smart growth. Uh, approve proposed changes to storm water ordinance and schedule a public hearing date uh, September 21st, uh, 2022 at 6 30 p.m. Any? Mr. Williams. Hi there. I'll be uh, brief here. Um, every decade or so, DEP comes around in municipalities and forces us to update our stormwater ordinance, and it's that time again. A little background here, timeline-wise. Um, the deadline to make these changes is September 30th, but DEP only finalized their changes in June. So what we did, we went to Smart Growth with information in July. And then at this month's Smart Growth meeting, we had a little more information. We had Nate Klein from Pannoni present. Um, and uh, the, the recommendation 3.0 is to adopt the changes and schedule hearing September, I believe it's before the work session, so we can meet the September 30 deadline. If you uh, saw the attachments, there's a lot of changes. They're uh, outlined in color in the ordinance, but there's really not a lot of substance here. Um, again, this is all being handed down by DEP. Um, that's all I have. Okay. Questions for Mr. Williams, anything? No? All right. We'll put that on consent as well. Thanks, Mr. Williams. Uh, 18 is approve a final land development plan for 501 Hannum Avenue. Um, this is committee recommended 3-0. Unless somebody has an issue with this. I don't know, Mr. Gore, anything you need to add with this? I don't need anything unless you want to have a brief presentation of sure. the plan. And then we also have uh, Alex Barlow here is from uh, DL Howe. He's the okay. engineer for the applicant. Bill, if you can pull up that site plan for me, if you would. So while, while Bill's getting that pulled up, this is 501 Haddam Avenue. It's the site of the former laundromat. Um, the applicant is proposing a 6,000 square foot uh, office building, uh, which will house a uh, orthodontist office and have additional 2,000 square feet for a, a second tenant um, in the future. They have 38 parking spaces on the site, which was approved through a variance by the zoning hearing board. The planning commission did make a favorable recommendation for approval of this project with the associated waivers that the applicant was seeking. I thought he would add it up by now. <laughs> So we have we have um, all all the consultants have reviewed this along with uh, all the borough departments. Myself, uh, we have re very clean review letters, <clears throat> and we are currently working through some of the administrative aspects with the agreements. Uh, there's an easement agreement that we're working through, and their PennDOT HOP permit. Other than that, it's a very clean review for this project. If you have any technical questions, uh, we can direct those towards Mr. Barlow to answer for Borough Council regarding specifics of the project. I, I don't have any questions. I remember when this when this came through as a uh, before the variances were were granted. I, I thought it was a good idea. Um, but I'll add something to that part of the town as well. Any? We looked at this a couple times.
first, I want to check the basic sign. Yep. Uh, for Buddy. Uh, for Buddy Burgers, uh, yeah. changing their sign. Uh, number two, uh, carriage house renovation. Mr. Gore found nothing wrong with that. Neither did we. Okay. And then number three was the proposed changes to Sedona uh, with the sign and patio area. Again, uh, we did not find anything uh, wrong with that. Is they're going to keep that intact? Gotcha. Uh, number two, that was num number two is kind of it's it's just Harb getting a recommendation for that carriage house. That's correct, because under the oh, yeah. ordinance, they're required to go to Harb to get recommendations for any carriage house improvements. So it's it's actually not a COA approval, but they just they do have to make that formal recommendation of that process. Okay, so that's not for a specific thing. That's for just the carriage house. What is it? What is that even? I'm not gonna, I don't know the word I'm looking for here. Is this like an uh, amendment to our? Planning code. What, what's no. So actually, for the for agenda purposes, I would say that only one and three need to move forward to the consent agenda. Okay. Okay. So two is just like informational, essentially. E essentially, yes. Okay. All right. Anybody have any issues with one or three? Then. Okay. So one and three move to consent under item nineteen. Thank you. Um, all right. Twenty is to deny the extension request for the dining platform at Greystone Oyster Bar. 7 North Church Street. Uh, the committee recommended 3 to deny this. Mr. McGinnis, you want to? Uh, yeah, that is correct. We we felt that uh, that Greystone uh, didn't deserve that extension due to the parking situation. Also on that street, uh, we need to update the meters to make sure that they're going to be in line with the parking spaces moving forward. Okay. Any issues with that? All right, so that'll go on consent as well. Okay, moving on. Uh, 21, approve sending a formal notice of violation to Mercado Restaurant at 33 West Market Street to remove the tables encroaching on the sidewalk at the intersection of Courthouse Alley pursuant to the extension agreement. Um, Question I have is why is this on an item for you to send a form? Why can't you just send the formal note notice? Uh, I think we just want to make it formal to send okay. a formal notice. But but I think we also did include that for uh, Greystone because of their infringement on kill wins. But if we forgot to put it on the agenda, we did discuss that. Though. I, I mean, I can do that uh, under the ordinance regularly. And, and I think there was two reasons. One, they wanted this formalized <clears throat> on the record. Uh, second, secondly, um, that agreement was between borough council. They gave, they allowed Mercados to put that extension in there. The, we then asked them to remove those tables as part of that agreement. So formality to okay. do this, but. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> just, just wanted to clarify that. I appreciate that. Um, any issues with this? Okay. That'll go under consent. All right, moving on to uh, 22, this is under finance and revenue. Uh, approve the 2022 Westchester Downtown Foundation Serpentine Sponsorship. Uh, we usually do that, we do this every year. Um, any issues with it? Okay, all right, we'll move that on to consent as well. And then um, 23 is other business, which is just our minutes from last month, July 19 and 20th uh, council meetings. Anybody have any issues with those, those minutes? Okay, well, we got all going under consent. Is there any other business? Mr. Gore, I see you running back up. One uh, item that I want to share with Borough Council. Uh, if you've driven past the post office in the past couple of days, you'll see some work is beginning over there. We have finally, finally gotten in contact with the post office and their, I guess, a subcontractor who does all the repairs for their post offices around the country. They are starting with removing the windows on the site and they're going to do them a couple at a time. They're going to remove the, <clears throat> excuse me, remove the windows and take them off site for repair and restoration. They'll then be reinstalled and they will fix any of the rotted trim on the outside of the building. This is to ensure that this is going to be done in kind with the, um, work that is there now. So they do not have to go to harp for any approval. Uh, they're also looking to get a contractor for the sidewalk repairs. 
and they are also uh, going to be working on the roof. There's a lot of work to be done there. It's going to be done in phases, but we're happy to say that it has begun. That's really great news. I appreciate it. Took that tour with a um, couple other elected officials. And, you know, it's funny, you don't, I think you walk past that building a lot until you like sit there and look at it like, wow, this needs some work. Um, this is really good to hear that they're going to start that and, and do that. Mr. Mr. Flynn, I feel like you're going to. Yeah, we, uh, this, this, this effort started Malcolm Johnstone over 25 years ago uh, to try to get the post office that just maintained the building. And uh, finally, uh, listen, I, I, I'm glad that uh, someone listened to our radio station. What's in it for me? Uh, I did um, not make a lot of people happy uh, by me accusing them of neglect here in the borough, but it's it, it worked. And I'm glad you guys were able to walk through and get this thing under control because uh, it, it's, it's a beautiful building. Uh, all the cornice is concrete, so they don't have to touch that. It's it's just the windows and doors that, that they need to maintain and the roof, obviously. Yeah. So it's a, it's a big plus because it's a landmark for the borough. Yeah, so. absolutely. Any other comments on that, Mayor? You want to say? Yeah, something? I was just going to add that uh, Chrissy Houlihan's office invited myself and and our, our officers of council here. Um, and so we did take the tour uh, of Westchester's office and they, and actually our office reached out to me today. So it's good to know that uh, they're following through. All the pressure has helped. Thank you. People still have the power. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Any other comments on that? Mr. Yeah, I, was say, I, I saw them pointing the, the stonework. Oh, nice. So happy to turn the corner and see that. And there looks like they're doing a great I job. I have not been up in town a couple of days. I got to check it out. That's great. Um, okay. Any other business? Seeing none, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.